What's going on everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Gustavo and today we're going to be talking about residential real estate. Now, I manage some residential real estate property. It's not much because we this is our family business, but I do manage them. I do the rental rates, I select uh, tenants, I take care of the properties maintenance wise. If I can't get it fixed myself, then you know it's it, it's my responsibility to find somebody who can fix it at a reasonable rate and does it well. With that being said, you know, there is no rules that are a hundred percent applicable for every real estate investment opportunity out there. You know, the rental rates in New York are not the same as the rental rates in Atlanta, the same way as they're not the same rental rates in Texas and so forth across the United States. However, I'm making this video to help you guys get a, an idea, you know, for you guys to get your feet wet on what real estate requires, what, it, what to expect, you know, what to do if you come across certain issues, you know, whatever the case may be. I just want you to guys to take from my experience and apply it to your situation so you guys could do better than what I'm doing or you know or if you guys have any ideas how I can improve my management opportunities how I can in, how can I do better then by all means share with us please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so before I get you into what the residential real estate situation that I'm dealing with, for those that have never invested in real estate, I wanna go over a few things with you guys. First of all, real estate is a very broad topic. It's, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. But just so you know, I have no experience as a real estate agent or broker. I do have some experience as a mortgage banker, which, you know, what I did was residential mortgages for people that wanted to buy houses, the different loan programs, what you needed to do to get qualified, what would disqualify you, and all the things that just goes on within getting a mortgage. The other thing that I do want to let you know is that we've been investing in real estate and I have some experience on residential and then I have some experience with commercial real estate. With that being said, let me explain what the real estate entails. Resident, uh, real estate, you can divide it into two subsections. You know, residential and then you have commercial. Now, within those, these two subsections, there's even further breakdowns into them of how you handle your properties, okay? So first, residential, you have single families, which is, you know, like a three bedroom house, three bedroom, two baths, four bedroom, three baths. It's just whatever configuration of real estate you find where one family can live comfortably in. Multifamilies is where you'll find one structure with three or four living units in it. Now, these multifamily units are not very common in the South. So I haven't seen very many of them in anything from Virginia South, I haven't seen very many of them. There are some, but not many. Now in the Northeast, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, you'll see a lot of them. And it's, it's a great investment opportunity if you're able to invest in a multifamily because you can live in one of them. You can get an FHA mortgage, live in one of them, and rent out your other units. It's a great way to offset your mortgage costs. It's a great way to get you into the in investment marketplace as well. It's easier to get further financing for, um, for loans, for investment properties, because you have that rental management experience, if you will. With that being said, having a single family unit does not mean that you won't get qualified for a investment opportunity. There's ways around it and we can talk about that at a different time. But right now, I just wanna explain what real estate is. So, so you have the multifamilies and then you have the single family units in residential real estate. How you manage these properties are different and they suit people in different ways. Remember that real estate brings upon itself different tax breaks, 
there's ways to do deductions on your taxes and every case is different so you should always ask your real estate you should always ask your real estate questions to knowledgeable agents knowledgeable CPAs accountants that do your taxes I'm not saying you can't investigate it I'm just saying before you get up out there and buy a multifamily house and start leasing out apartment units or rental units or whatever don't don't just go into do your taxes all crazy claiming a bunch of different things that you didn't do because you're gonna get yourself in trouble and as we all know Uncle Sam's gonna get his and if you try to come with that craziness he's gonna knock you in the head for it so we'll get to those those topics at a later time okay so how do you manage residential real estate there's different ways to do it again this is all on a case-by-case -case basis you know long-term leases which are anything that's two years and above my favorite way to handle it then you have year-to-year -year leases you know they're very common everybody does some it's not my favorite way to go about it and I'll talk about why I don't like it then you have short-term leases short-term leases think about it like what traveling nurses get you know you're at a place where you need to lease it out for three months okay traveling nurses do that a lot a corporate housing that's a, that's a big one that's a big market to get into if you have a, if you have an apartment complex uh, an apartment unit in let's say I'm a, a big area like a city like New York like Atlanta like Philadelphia corporate housing is such a big market that they pay crazy amounts of money crazy amounts of money to rent these units out for three four months at a time you know sometimes they even go up to a year I haven't seen many of them that do but I have seen them so that's something to keep an eye out for then you have the famous Airbnb VRBOs plans that are coming out and you'll see a lot of these being promoted online now since it's starting to get a lot of traction you're gonna notice that there are a lot of cities that are putting restrictions on Airbnb units also when you have Airbnb units you have to be more involved in the real estate because after every every visitor that comes in and stays in your unit you know you got to have somebody that goes out there and cleans the house disinfects it especially now in the times of COVID you know you you want to get the house sanitized you want to make sure that there's nothing that could get other folks sick because word's gonna get around they're gonna write a review hey I was in this house uh, you know it was dirty it was messy it wasn't clean thoroughly and then you have vacation rentals like apartment like um, mountain mountain beach units these are infamously great to get them they're seasonal units and there's benefits to them as well but again everything is how you want to manage your real estate there is no right answer on how to make your money in it the only thing that matters is that you're staying positive that you're making money so whatever way you want to go just know that your involvement in it is the most important thing in it in the real estate okay so that's residential now commercial real estate it's a broader topic commercial and involves a lot of things commercial you'll have and I'll just rattle off a few off the top of my head so you guys you guys can have an idea but in commercial real estate you have single tenant units you'll have multi-tenant units now the multi tenants are like an outlet where you have eight or ten tenants in one unit you know and they all share the they all share parts of the maintenance like um, landscaping dumpster the water is broken down into different units and expenses then you have industrial you have medical you'll have um, what else is out there you special units you'll have restaurants bars hotels warehouses storage units I mean there's just so much out there so commercial real estate is very different it's very broad and there's different ways to handle it most commercial units are uh, lease terms are between three up to ten years I have seen some contracts that are 
you know are larger or longer in terms where they will last up to 20 to 25 years it just depends how you want to manage your commercial real estate now real estate i know it's it's labeled as a passive income and it really is a great investment there's two things in life that are limited it's time and real estate you can't make any more land out there you're not gonna find it you're not gonna create it what you can do is you can invest in real estate and of course you know the value increases there's gonna be movements in the economy where the property value goes up it's gonna get tested like anything else but stay true to it and of course maintain it because if you let your real estate maintenance costs get up there, you're gonna lose money and we, we don't want that. You know, I wanna show you guys how to be profitable in it. There are some factors again out there that will have you questioning whether it was the right choice, but ultimately it really is. There's, I just, I don't know of any safer way to invest. It isn't Bitcoin. It isn't gonna, you're not gonna invest 30,000 in real estate and tomorrow it's gonna be a uh, 50,000 or $80,000 and then it's gonna go up and down be volatile. Real estate stays consistent. So the principles of real estate are gonna be location. You know, is it in a city? Is it gonna be in a good area, a bad area? Not all real estate is good real estate. You cannot go into a poor neighborhood, buy a $50,000 house just because you found it cheap, put $20,000 in maintenance and repairs and expect to collect $1,500 worth of rent. It isn't gonna happen. And if you find it and if you get lucky at it, you know, by all means, thank your lucky stars, but more than likely, your tenants are not gonna be up to par. Which, you know, brings you late fees, collections, evictions, it just, there's a lot, you have to be smart on how to invest your money. Not all real estate is good money. Not all commercial real estate is good money either. Just because you have, let's say, a shopping center up in the middle of the woods, because you found it cheap, that doesn't mean it's gonna get all the tenants you wanna get. It doesn't mean you're gonna charge top prices. Even in this economy, rental rates have gone up considerably, considerably. I found a 4,000 square foot restaurant space that I was trying to lease and they were wanting $9,000 a month. That's outrageous. Five years ago, it would have been $3,000, $4,000 a month. That was acceptable. Even then, we thought it was a little high, but it was acceptable. Right now, trying to get $9,000 out of it for a restaurant space is hard, especially because inflation affects food prices. But I also manage restaurants, so that's a conversation for a later time. With that being said, location, location, location. Always be gauging what the situation is. How much traffic count is going through it? The house that you buy is near main roads. Is there gonna be a lot of traffic? Because a lot of traffic will also deter people from leasing out your property. You know, is it allowed? Is it dangerous? You know, how much is it costing you? How much is your mortgage gonna be after you give your 20, 25% if you're doing an investment loan? Or if you did a FHA loan and you're moving out of it because you know, you have your job is requiring you to move somewhere else. How much is your mortgage? Is it worth, is it worth to refinance your house at a lower cost with a lower rate if you can and try to lease it out? You know, is that something you need to do? Is it worth the $7,000 it costs you to refinance your house? You know, are you gonna, how long is it gonna take you for you to make your money? How much rent are you gonna collect? Don't forget that you have to upkeep the house as well. You can't leave full responsibility of a house that doesn't belong to the tenant, to them, to fix, to upkeep. You have to be on point with your property. You have to at least drive by it once every three weeks, once every month. Please upkeep your house, keep up with it. Don't just forget about it. You know, do you know your neighbors? Are your neighbors gonna call you and give you the, the lowdown? Are they gonna call you and say, hey, your tenant's tearing up your house. I don't want you to lose money. Please check them out, come check them. I mean, there's a lot of things that goes into real estate. So this is, this is not to deter you from investing in it. I'm actually encouraging to invest in real estate. What I want you to do is I want you to do your research. Follow me, 
hit a like, subscribe, and let me show you guys what I deal with, what you can expect to deal with in real estate. And let's grow together, you know. See how I manage my rental properties, both residential and commercial, because you guys, there's a lot to it. And I just think the better prepared we are, the easier it will be for us to handle. Okay, well, I appreciate it. And let me show you guys what I'm dealing with in my residential house. So this is one of our house that I manage here in Macon. This is middle Georgia, but um, that's good old Blackie right there. So this is a three bedroom, three and a half house, a townhouse in Macon, Georgia. Now we're doing some maintenance since the tenants have really taken a hit on our house. You know, we're working on our deck, so that's some of the pressure treated wood that we're using. Uh, this is the garage. Obviously it has to be clean and taken care of, but let me show you guys the house. So as you walk in, we're in the basement, the first floor. You guys are gonna notice that it's got a large room. There's no fan here, but it does have like, it gets most of the cold air coming from the AC unit. It has its own bathroom. You know, and everything has to be clean because the tenants left it dirty. In this house, we really, it did have some ugly carpet all through the house. So the previous tenant, well, before that, let me back up a little bit. My previous tenant didn't like to have the house well lit. So he has a bunch of burnt light bulbs. He didn't even change that when he left or while he was living here, he just liked going in the dark. But when we bought the house, it had carpet and we switched it into hardwood just because we weren't living here at the time too. So as we're coming around, we're getting into what would be the main floor. Now this is a basic house, uh, but I mean, you know, it has a stove oven, has the sink, the dishwasher, the refrigerator. This would be the dining room, for, the formal dining room, I guess study area uh, i always keep the units with a washer and dryer i give that as a benefit to my tenants and i'll also tell you my strategy behind that as well you know the pantries a little uh, room closet or whatever this would be the living room and of course it has a fireplace now we changed the blinds in this house we had to put these because they look better the door will be changed. I'll have to replace that as well. But looking into it, it's a pretty open floor concept. It's a very pretty house. And please excuse the lack of light bulbs. It's not because I want it, it's just my, just, you know, we're doing maintenance as I'm getting it ready to get another tenant in here. So, like I said, it had an ugly, like basic carpet in the house when we bought it. But because my sister was going into law school at the time and it's two blocks from the Mercer Law School. We go, went ahead and upgraded into hardwood floors. Now we didn't do this in the hopes to, uh, you know, raise the value of the property. At that time, we weren't even in the real estate, real estate investment game. We just did it because we liked it. So as we get on to the third floor, you know, you have a little closet here. You have the, second bedroom it's a pretty good size open to you know this is the closet it's missing the handles please excuse that it's a decent sized closet it has its own bathroom sorry i was listening for any sort of leaks there's the attic right here. That's my washer. Now we, we're gonna get a new dryer and brought up here as well. This is the master bathroom, double sink, toilet, and of course the shower tub thing. Now this is the master bedroom. It's a pretty big room. It's an open concept too. We had these built custom. So my sister loves shoes and purses so we had her a closet built 
by hand is handcrafted. It's pretty nice. It's not built into the wall, so it can't be removed. It has one side side of closets here to hang purses. And then of course it has the other one. And then it has the balcony. Please excuse the door. Overlooking the, the neighborhood as well as the city of Macon. Now we're working on this, so it's gonna look better, I promise. Well guys, now that you've seen the house in Macon, you know, I just wanna give you some backstory for the house. My sister went into law school in Macon, Georgia. So we needed a house that was close by to the university. Um, this house holds a lot of sentimental value for us because of course my sister went all, lived in there her whole three years that she was in law school. And uh, out of a business perspective, the house is in a good location. We get a, we get a good rent for it but this house has also taught me a lot about residential real estate. I made a lot of mistakes with this house. Um, and two of the mistakes that I wanted to talk to you about was the rental times in my rental contracts. The first thing is how long is a lease for me to be profitable? That's the question. I can't do Airbnb in that house because there's no major attractions in Macon. And if you do your research, Macon is not really a good Airbnb market. It doesn't have a stadium to go watch like the Braves or the Falcons or the Atlanta United. So really there's not that much going on in Macon. Second, there's a lot of college student housing needed in that property. So with that being said, my mistake was at the beginning, I was doing year to year leases to college students. I wasn't charging a large amount of rent, but this is a business. You know, I, it isn't worth for me to just pay my mortgage and have the wear and tear on my house happen and come out of pocket and pay for the repairs. So year to year leases, you know, I noticed that my house was overstressed there was a lot of movement going in and out because college students are very social. They're having parties, they're drinking, they're spilling beer. They, my house needed to get paint, painted every three years. I mean, there was a lot going on. And then within the neighborhood, if you call where my house is, a neighborhood with the other houses, my neighbors were getting disgruntled because a lot of people were coming in and out of the house at different times of the day and they felt uncomfortable. So, you know, that was one of my mistakes and you know, you live and you learn, but you can't be disgruntled. You have to take the learning opportunity as it comes. Don't make the mistakes that I did, learn from them. So the other thing that I learned was tenant selection. I'm not discriminating against college students. However, there are working the working population, the ones that are plumbers, the ones that are in construction, the ones that work at Geico, the ones that work at the military base, those are better base tenants because they want the house for more than a year. So as I'm coming into three years of doing the year to year lease, I'm spending on maintenance, I'm noticing that I'm not making money and paying just a mortgage isn't making money. So what happens? How do I learn that I need to change my business strategy? Well, what happened was is that I had a bad tenant, some bad kids living in there and they really trashed my house. I'm talking, I had about $7,000 worth of repairs to do in the house. So, you know, it, it, comes, it, dawn, it dawns on me that after three years that I'm spending too much money, you know, it dawns on me, okay, well, I'm not renting out to any kids because I'm tired of their false promises. Oh, we're good. We're not having parties, blah, blah, blah. They trashed my house. I didn't pay rent for a few months and now I'm out $7,000 worth of money. So I start changing my game plan. Hey, well, I don't, I don't want somebody who's here for just a year. I want two years for them to be on the hook. So I changed my leasing terms. I'm now due two years or more on my leases. I noticed that what's 
being left over on the rent is helping me recoup the six thousand seven thousand dollars i spent in it okay so that's acceptable and i see that within the two years that i have a tenant in there i made my money back and some more okay so i'm happy i'm happy about that i changed my process of doing business even better so what happens next you know i have to think about ways of how to improve my business so what can i do to charge a little more without my tenant feeling disgruntled well the other thing is washer and dryers every time a tenant moved in and out they were bringing their crappy washers and dryers because again it's a rental so they don't give a damn about damaging your water lines you know they use pipe wrench whatever damage your water now you have water leaks my ceiling got damaged so I said, I'll stop this. I'll put in a washer and dryer in the unit. And now I go up on the rent. So I pay off the washer and dryer. I'm not buying no $3,000 washer or dryer. I buy the cheap ones, even though they look nice. I go to Brandsmart, buy the set, and then have them delivered to the house, installed by the professional unit. So I know that's under their liability. And now we can continue. So my rent goes up a little more. I'm not excessive, but $150 more of rent a month. I've paid off my washer and dryer in about five, six months. I still have that in the house. It's a deduction into my taxes. Perfect. That goes on. We continue renting out the house. Everything goes well. And of course, every now and then you have to up, be better at bedding your tenants. Because the last tenant that I had in there was just filthy. He was messy. He did not like to clean the house. He liked to have bags of garbage laying everywhere. So of course I had to approach him twice about it. And you know, ultimately he decided it was better for him to move somewhere else where I wasn't, where the landlord wasn't gonna be as strict. But I hope you guys enjoyed this content. I will keep you guys updated. And I'm gonna tell you guys more on how to better your rental management game. Thanks guys.